don't know the reason that I was born in this life. It is said that at the end of each lifetime, there's a life review where you see all the significant events in your life. Many times the events that are significant are not the ones you think in the world that are significant. It may not matter that you're a successful business tycoon or a successful whatever. It may be that you did not respond to someone in a kind way, that you did not learn gratitude or you did not learn patience. It could be any of those things. And then based on your soul's journey, you pick to be born in a particular scenario with certain parents, you know. Sometimes it is the because the, the soul picks parents that people come together. That attraction becomes so strong. It's almost uh, orchestrated. It is said that it's orchestrated by the child to come. And sometimes when the child is born, that attraction breaks. It's very strange. So you're born into a life. You're born into a life. And after that, you develop your own intelligence, your mind, your ego. You get conditioned in a certain way. And the choices you make determine the future course. It's like a web, you know, like think of it like a network of veins. Every time you come to a point, you can go this way, you can go that way. You, can, you go that way, you again you have a bunch of choices. You pick another one, again something else opens. The road that we are, are, are going on is not completely predetermined. I mean, if you have to go, you're going on I-75 and you want to come to Coral Springs or you're coming on the sawgrass, you can take one of four exits and you'll still come to Coral Springs, right? Any one of those exits are good. So the choices that are, are, are there in front of you Decide what your life is going to be. But very often in life we feel we are boxed in. That we are put into this place where I don't have a choice. There's nothing I can do. This is it for me. I can't get married at this stage or I can't get divorced at this stage or I can't find a partner at this stage or I can't change my career or I can't change my job. And it leads to a lot of frustration because you feel that there is nothing more that you can do. You don't like the place you are in. You don't like the person you are. You don't like the friends around you. You don't like the place that you're living in. You constantly wish for other circumstances. And we all do that. We all do that. You will notice that even in the course of a day, in the morning, you won't find yourself uh, criticizing your circumstances. But as the day progresses and the effects of the morning meditation wear out, you suddenly see, I wish something would work out for me. I wish something would change. I wish this would happen. I wish that would happen. You know, life really, this is so boring. Who wants to cook? You know, and who wants to go to an empty house? Who wants to be in a full house? Whatever it is. By the evening, you're not happy with what's happening. But if you make a choice to just accept it totally, it 
it's a surrender. Right? And when you surrender, you're not giving up anything. Because if you're surrendering, surrendering to divine consciousness, I've always told you, you are divine <laughs> consciousness, right? So you're surrendering to yourself, really. So what's the great loss? Accepting your situation, accepting who you are, accepting the community you were born in, the color of your skin, the political situation. Mm. <laughs> the way things are going in the world, the climate change, whatever is happening at this moment, just allows you to say yes to the moment. Allows you to stop that resistance from coming up, that keeps saying, no, this is not good, this is not right, you are not right, your hair color is wrong, your face is wrong, you're too fat, you're too thin, you're too this, you're too that. Immigrants into this country have a very difficult time. Very, very difficult time. They have to learn another language. And, and, the, and the, it's the color of the skin, the way their features are, the way they don't fit in. Even second generation Indian kids have a very difficult time understanding who they are. On the one hand, there's the home culture with all the Bollywood and Bhangra and Garba and, and all the festivals and all, the, and all of that. And on the other hand, there's this outside Western culture, you know, with, with drinking and going to bars and going to rock concerts. And they have a very hard time figuring out who am I. I mean, we all have a hard time figuring out who am I. But people that come from other cultures have feel that they need to give up who they essentially are and become part of something else in order to feel settled. And this is a huge problem. They call them Oreo cookies, brown on the outside and white on the inside. Because the kids are raised here with Western values. Their friends are white. Their um, communication is white. But they have the strong influence. And for some reason, that is seen to be a setback. When I used to come and visit many years ago, my, daughter, my sister would tell me, change into pants if you're going to the mall. We were going to the temple and I was in this outfit. She would say change. Because back then, 30 years ago, <coughs> the, she felt completely out of place going, going to the mall. And I know, I know you, you understand what that is, mm -hmm. right? You were there at that time. Sometimes who we are doesn't match up to what society expects from us. You're supposed to get married to someone of the opposite sex and have children and a station wagon and a suburban home. That's what all kids are supposed to do. Get a fantastic degree. And when you don't fit, you know, fit in with that mold, it's really hard. I interviewed a young man who was homosexual and he was with the art of living and he was testing the guru, you know, to see is this guy tolerant, is he, uh, you know, uh, conventional, what are, what are his views on homosexuality? And he asked, he went and asked him point blank, Guruji, and it's in my book, what do you think of homosexuality? I can't remember which fruit, but I think he said, 
Do you like pumpkin? So this boy was taken aback. He had asked him about homosexuality and he says, the guru says, do you like pumpkin? So he says, would you like to eat pumpkin for breakfast, pumpkin for lunch, pumpkin for tea and pumpkin for dinner? So he says, no, he says, the divine loves diversity. That was all he said. Right. And I gave you a few minutes ago the Vedic reason behind homosexuality, which to me makes more sense than anything I've, you know, that it's hardwired into your DNA. What do they mean by that? We carry with us impressions, right? Impressions, if, especially if they're very strong, into successive lifetimes. If you're born in 20 lifetimes as a woman, you will have an attraction for a man and those impressions remain. And after 20 lifetimes, if you're then born as a man, that attraction, that thing, attraction for men is still hardwired into your subconscious. Not in your DNA, it's not in your, you cannot I pull out a gene that is a homosexual gene. I'm sure people talk about it, it's not hardwired into your DNA. It is your subconscious. It is something inside of you that tells you that this is the way to behave. But when that doesn't match up to the family's expectation, then there is a very depleted self-image. Here is a deep desire, a deep uh, uh, way of behaving, an attraction that you have that you can never give a voice to. Because you're scared of hurting your mother, you're scared of hurting your father, you don't know what it's like to come out of the closet. And if you're hardcore Christian, then you're sent into some uh, seminary to have you reconditioned which I think is a, is a horror, which I think is an absolute horror. We have to accept people and situations as they are. But more than that, we have to accept ourselves as we are. If you try not to change your children, to make them do what you want them to do. You will enjoy them even more. Stand at a distance and let them come to you if they need you. They can take their own decisions. You have brought them up with the, with the values that you thought best. Right? A lot of parents just want their children to do what, what they want. If you're from the Bay Area, the children are under a lot of pressure to succeed. A lot of pressure. Because every child is getting into an Ivy League school, every child is excelling, every child is making a robot at the age of three. I mean, the competition is fierce and if you have an artistic bent and you're not a robotic scientist you're out of place there there are many reasons not to fit in why do you need to fit in I kind of like living in my alternate universe I don't fit in in any way or form. I have found I'm very comfortable with where I am. I'm extremely grateful for the choices that I have been given, for the opportunities that I have had and for the way my life has panned out. And I'm excited for the next steps. 
unless you are completely happy right now, you cannot spring forward to the next step. It holds you back. It reins you in. It makes you less of a person. It doesn't allow you to tap into your true potential. We are all born to do great things. And that spiritual awakening, that enlightenment can happen at any moment. To any one of us. You don't have to be from a particular race, a particular background, a particular sex, anything. It happens when you are in, when you slip into the moment and you stay there. You get locked, trapped. <coughs> Live your life moment to moment. Every moment is pure potential. And that's what even quantum mechanics says. That the quantum theory is all about potentiality. That consciousness is nothing but pure potential waiting to explode, manifest itself in different ways. Your thoughts, your feelings, your values, your attitudes, and of course what you say makes a big difference in how your life pans out. Don't worry that you're weird that you're different. Each one of us is completely weird and different. Be proud to be weird. Be proud to be unique. Be proud to be different. Because even though we are apparently different, there is something that links us all and we are all one. And I always tell you that I contradict myself almost immediately when I say something. And that's what the truth is like. The truth is contradictory. It is and it isn't. It's all perspective. It's all about how you live your life. It's all about how you live this moment. What you're doing with your life right now. So be comfortable, be comfortable. You are exactly in the right place and exactly at the right time. Just know that.